general rules. So, what is the purpose of the ITU competition rules and the ITU derogations? Well, the whole purpose of the rules is to create an environment which maximizes sportsmanship, optimizes safety, and endorses the principle that triathlon is an individual sport. The ITU competition rules are intended to penalize competitors who seek to gain an unfair advantage. And the key word in that is seek to gain. There has to be intention when you're interpreting athletes' behavior. This means that consideration should be given to competitors who have unintentionally infringed a rule, and if the resulting unfair advantage can be reversed, then it would not be appropriate to formally penalize that competitor. So you need to use your common sense. Another way to look at it is, is the race safe? Is it fair? And is it fun? So, the general rules. Some of the most commonly referenced general rules are less to do with the technical aspects of triathlon and more to do with the athlete's behavior. So, what I want you to think about is, what would you do or how should you treat an athlete who um, might have uh, negative behavior in any of these situations. Treating other comp competitors, officials, volunteers and spectators with respect and courtesy. Use of abusive language to another uh, athlete, spectator or an official. Um, being responsible for keeping on the designated course. Not use any equipment that will distract the athlete from paying full attention to the surroundings. Now, this is a long-winded say, way of saying the use of mobile phones or walkie-talkies. Not discard any equipment on the course except at the approved dedicated locations. Uh, this generally means that you discard any paper and rubbish uh, and anything you take with you on the course within the designated litter zones. Not cause offence to others through deliberate acts of nudity or personal toileting which might be seen in public. So, this generally uh, refers to the bare torso rule. Um, you know, athletes will sometimes forget to change their top having come off the bike, or some athletes will feel that they can run uh, bare torso in an extremely warm day. Um, so these are uh, usually the situation in which you'd have to interpret the athlete's intention. So, common sense at all stages when you're when you're implementing the rules. There are a few areas though where there is no compromising and no um, interpretation. Uh, any athlete that treats a competitor, official, a volunteer, spectator with disrespect or use of abusive language is a simple red card. Any athlete who uh, moves off the designated course the, uh, the first uh, approach is to advise the athlete they amend their behaviour or they get a red card. Uh, this could be as simply as asking an athlete to go back uh, and uh, they may have gone off, off the course to go to the toilet and in, in private, of course, or they may have um, uh, had to get off the course for some reason. If they come back on the course, they need to come back on at the point they left the course. If they do that, then let them off. Um, any athlete caught with um, uh, uh, devices that could distract them, again, uh, if this was an elite or a national championships event, you would just be issuing a penalty straight away. But in an event where you have a lot of new people beginning, you would use the opportunity to stop the athlete, advise them of the rules, ask them to amend their behavior, take the earphones out, um, and to, to move on before issuing a red card. Now, the last one, which is um, acts of nudity. Again, using your discretion, uh, you the first, the first port of call in this situation is that you ask the athlete to stop, go back to their bike if it's in transition, put on their top and continue on running. Uh, what often happens in that situation is athletes uh, will ignore you and run off 
in which case it's a, a red card. In fact, any athlete that ignores any stop and go penalty um, is an automatic DSQ. But you always have to ask yourself, what is the likely intention of this athlete's behavior? So, is this legal? Uh, this is a screenshot or a picture from an Ironman event. Um, uh, if you will remember from the previous discussion around the rules, um, 2017, the, uh, the uh, Ironman uh, adopted the ITU rules in relation to bare torsos. So now the rule in relation to bare torsos is you need to keep anything, um, uh, uh, your upper body covered um, uh, as far as the sternum. So if you're wearing a zipper top triathlon suit, triathlete suit, that needs to be zipped up to the chest. Uh, it can't be zipped um, to allow the belly button um, uh, show. Um, and in that situation with an athlete, you would stop, advise them to change, to zip up and to run on. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever seen this, um, but there was a, a very... Um, famous incident in a triathlon event a number of years ago um, involving these two brothers. Let's have a look. Johnny has to win and to be sure of taking the title and right now he seems to have lost control of his legs. And this is worrying. Oh, and he's starting to slow. And there is a little way to go. There's half a K to go. And Johnny is running out of time and is losing. He's losing his sense of direction. This is worrying. Oh, goodness me. This is a horrible sight. Jonathan Brownlee has lost it now and has staggered to a stop at the side of the course and Alistair's stopped to help him along and Alistair is going to try and carry his brother home. Dramatic scenes in Cozumel as the Olympic champion carries his younger brother towards the podium. Oh my god, I cannot believe what we are seeing here. Matt, is this allowed? Is he allowed to help his brother? You know, is that part of the rules? I'm not too sure. We've never seen anything like this before. Unbelievable scenes, unbelievable scenes in Cozumel. The Brownlee brothers arm in arm, but it's not by way of celebration. Henry Schumann celebrating, he's going to win this race in Cozumel out of nowhere. But we have to be concerned about the health of Jonathan Brownlee, and they're not even on the final stretch yet. Schumann wins in Cozumel. The brothers are coming home arm in arm to finish in second and third, but Johnny can hardly stand. And Alistair is having to drag him across the line and pushing him home, pushing him home for second. Johnny finishes in second. Goodness me, what an incredible conclusion here in Cozumel. I've never seen anything like that anywhere in world sports. So, what was the intention here? Was it to help another athlete get their medal, uh, claim their prize money, ensure they got qualification points, or was it just simply one brother looking out for another? At the end of the day though, uh, it didn't really matter. Uh, you cannot help another athlete um, uh, across the line in a race. It's as simple as that. Um, and as a result of this, the, the rules became far more explicit around uh, assistance uh, towards other athletes.